Hey, I'm Sean Martin, president and founder of Donick Snowboards. I'm actually all in my gear because I'm up at uh, Copper Mountain for USASA Nationals. We're mounting a ton of Alpine bindings this week and I'm seeing a lot of stuff done wrong. So I wanted to show you guys how to use these bindings. It's a long overdue video. So um, number one, when you take your bindings out of the box, they're gonna look like this. You're gonna find four of these things in the box. These are probably the most critical thing to your setup. So don't throw them away, don't get rid of them, they need to go on your binding. And where they go is right here on the bottom of the toe and the heel, okay? So they just have these little rubber pieces that pop into the holes and you wanna make sure they're there. If they aren't, what will happen is this sharp corner on this binding will cut through the top sheet of your board and break it, all right? The other thing, uh, I did once have a customer remove this rubber O-ring. That is critical. It's also very important, so do not take this off. Leave it in. And the reason that customer did that was because when the bindings are very, brand, very new, this metal disc can be difficult to seat. Uh, it's not really that hard, but you just have to know what you're doing. So when you set it on the board, you want to take a screwdriver this is the biggest no-no. If I ever hear that you've used this, that's gonna be a big problem because what you'll do is you'll strip the bottom of the threads off the screw and you'll strip the top of the threads out of the insert and you'll never be able to mount bindings on the board again. So, take a screw. Do you wanna show them how to get the angles aligned? Yep, okay, so you're gonna notice that there's a little mark right here on the aluminum disc or the metal disc. And then they're very hard to read, but there's angle markings here for both goofy and then regular, or it's goofy and regular. I can't read it because I don't have my reading glasses on. And then also show the can't yes. discs. Yes, there we go. When you are setting them up, you can see that the two bindings are canted inward. That's really important. You definitely do not want to mount them so that the bindings are canted outward. So you're gonna, look at this and you're gonna go set like this and this is my right and this is my left, okay? So when you're ready to set your stance width, you're gonna put the binding here and this metal disc is kind of floating above that rubber and you're gonna go, it won't start, okay? What you have to do is put a little muscle into it, push down on that screw, make a few turns and boom, it'll start. Then you can, particularly when they're brand new, it's tough to get the one corner to corner. It's easier to get one near it. So then you start this one and then just move around in a circle somehow like that. And you'll get all your bindings nice and tight. But that first screw is the toughest one. You really just gotta put a lot of muscle into it and push it down, okay? Now, uh, before we go to adjusting the bindings to your boot, we're gonna look at these cans here. So some people like to take the cans out, other people like toe lift in the front or heel lift in the back. And there is a way to do that. You're gonna get a little plastic bag with some parts in it that will allow you to change or build that out. So what you would do is you would take a screwdriver and you're gonna turn this way and it's going to drive that toe or heel block all the way in or out. So we're just going to keep doing this. Um, when you're using a screwdriver here you want to use a number three tip is the second best thing you can do or you can use a posi drive screwdriver. We sell posi drive screwdrivers on our website um, but if you look at the top here you're gonna notice that I'm starting to expose some screws. And these screws are what hold this toe and heel bail in place. So once I drive this all the way out, it's gonna stop. Now what I can do is I can unscrew these screws like this. and that piece comes off, all right? And then what I've got here is a canting wedge. 
This is comes standard. If you look at it on end, you're gonna see it's really thin over here and a little bit thicker over on this side. That's what generates the can. Now, in the box came a blue or yellow bag with a heel lift or toe lift. And there are two pieces, so there's a really thick one and a really thin one. And you wanna put both of those pieces in, but you put the thick one in where you want the lift and the thin one on the opposite side. That's what generates that sloping angle. You do so not want to just put one in, you want to put both in there when you're doing that toe or heel lift. And typically the front toe is lifted and the back heel is lifted. Correct, yes. So uh, typically what you're gonna see most guys do is something called gas pedal, which is a toe lift or a heel lift. And I ride a heel lift and flat in the front uh, some people prefer a toe lift in the front and nothing in the back or a toe lift and a heel lift. If you want both, you will have to buy a second set of uh, toe or heel lift shims, okay? So you're gonna build up what you want here. Make sure that your cans are going the same direction. Make sure that you've got both the lift in uh, the, the thick piece and the thin piece on the lift kit, and then you can put it back together. And in that, Part, you're going to find some longer screws. It's very easy to determine which screw goes where at that point, as long as you put those wedges in the right place. Then just put everything back together. Pause again. Because we're going to look at how to adjust the boot or the binding to the boot. So it's easiest to do this on a bench not having somebody's foot in it and down on the floor. So take your boots off and you're gonna, you're gonna get that bail over the heel, flip up the toe piece, and right now you can see that this boot is flopping around, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down the end here and I'm gonna look at where I'm hanging over, okay? Hang on, I'm gonna go to the other side. Go to the other side. So you can kind of see that if I was to draw a straight line from the edge up to where it's going to touch, I can get a much steeper angle over here, right, than I, than I can over here. So the one I want to drive in, I kind of want to drive the boot that way. So I'm going to start by turning this screw here until I'm tight. And that's getting pretty good but I'm gonna make some adjustments. But if I wiggle the boot, I can still see it's moving a little bit in the binding. So I wanna go a little tighter than that, all right? Now it's not wiggling. I can get it closed, open and closed pretty well. I might go just a hair tighter, but you don't want this really hard to do. You just want it to just kind of clip in and you want the boot to not buckle or bend. And you wanna see that the boot is relatively rigid in there. Now. The last thing I'm gonna do is we're still gonna continue looking at what's that angle I can get here versus back here. Right now, I think they look pretty close. Um, so I'm gonna leave them there, but you can totally drive this heel piece this way or that, and the toe piece that way or that way in order to adjust your toe and heel overhang uh, when you're riding. Pretty much everything you need to know about mounting the F2 bindings um, and we'll definitely get you started. I'm gonna review a couple things. Most important is these, uh, these damping pads that go under the toe and heel. You, I have seen boards break on the very first run out because people have left those out, so make sure you put those in. And when you're first putting that binding on the very first time, it's gonna be hard to get that screw to engage. Put some muscle on it, push down, get it started, and then work in a circular pattern. That's what's gonna get them seated the very first time. So there you go. You should be pretty much an expert at mounting F2 bindings at this point.